I just, I don't understand it. Like, I can't imagine what someone would get out of this. Car windows were smashed in East Area, but these students are mad about what happened next. These veterans aren't coming home from war, but they're being welcomed like never before. It's really gross. She found more than just water in her shower, and she thinks it could have been prevented. I'm Addie Haney. And I'm Jason Puckett. All that and more on Phoenix 14 News. Continuing coverage of a story you heard first on 14. Imagine waking up one morning and finding your car windows have been smashed. Police are investigating who broke at least 11 car windows around campus this weekend. Good evening and welcome to Phoenix 14 News. Jeff Ackerman joins us in the studio with reactions from the victims. Jeff? Thanks, Jason. Phoenix 14 News brought you several reports regarding vandalism this year, and this one isn't much different. Several students found their cars damaged Sunday morning. The main question people were asking was who would do something like this? These incidents occurred on streets without cameras, and that's what's concerning some Elon students. Broken windows, mirrors, and nothing left but tiny pieces of glass. I just, I don't understand it. Like, I can't imagine what someone would get out of this. Several cars parked on Lebanon Avenue and East College Avenue were damaged this weekend. The reason? Well, that's something people are trying to figure out. The school should try to do something about this. Sophomore Kim Lillianthal was away for the weekend and found one of her car windows shattered Sunday afternoon on East College Avenue by the tennis courts. When she called campus police, they directed her to Elon Town Police. This, the university should be supportive of its students and their property and protect them because that's kind of their job more so than Elon Town. Her main concern is lack of cameras on campus. For instance, the area where her car is parked has no cameras in the area. I don't think it would take too much effort to have a camera on the street corner or a campus security vehicle like parked here. Sophomore Ashley Fowler also found her car windows damaged along with a broken side view mirror. This mirror was wedged um, in here. She says incidents like this have been reported to police in the past and thinks something needs to be done about it. Particularly for this area, um, campus security, when I talked to them, they even said, you know, well, that's a, a high crime rate uh, area just because there's no cameras there. So if we know that, then, you know, I, I understand that it's an added cost to add cameras here, but I feel like it would be worth it. We reached out to both campus safety and police and Elon Town Police, but they could not give us any more information at this time. Be sure to stay with Phoenix 14 News throughout the week for more updates on this situation. Jason. Thanks, Jeff. Elon recently had its first vote on drinks, and the most talked about item in Alamance County's election this year passed. Roughly 75% of Elon residents voted for liquor by the drink. Local restaurants worked to get this vote on the ballot in July, and now they say its passing will bring a boost to Elon's overall economy. Local restaurants worked to get this vote on the ballot in July. After moving into the new colonnades, some students experienced an unpleasant surprise. Elon University is known for its brick walkways and fountains, but not many know that Elon has a ferry. The North Carolina Department of Transportation, affiliated with Elon University, the Department of Transportation Ferry, affiliated with Elon University, was christened November 7th in Man Harbor, North Carolina. As is tradition, each North Carolina ferry, Elon's logo and colors will be on display on the ship. The ferry will, be, will transport up to 50 vehicles and 300 people and is scheduled to take four to six trips per day. It is scheduled to set sail this summer. College loans are the number one source for debt among, among Americans. Our Mallory Lane caught up with one alum who is back at Elon paying off her debt one workday at a time. So I had a great we apologize, we're having technical difficulties. Well, back. <laughs> For Doris White, the decision to attend Elon was easy. I love the interaction between the professors and myself. And Sorry, very we, active we apologize, always. we're having technical difficulties and we're getting back to that later. 
We spoke with the Director of Financial Planning at Elon, Patrick Murphy, who says more students are asking about loans, but that most Elon graduates are able to pay them back eventually. President Lambert is asking Congress to pay more attention to financial aid, and he wants you to do the same. A recent tweet from our head Phoenix read, please join me in asking Congress to preserve federal student aid. Consider signing the online petition. The link is to a group called studentalliance.org, and the website says there are 62 colleges and universities working to protect core federal aid programs such as Pell Grants and student loan benefits. Pre President Lambert says students need to be aware of national issues that will affect Elon's ability to help them pay for college. Flu season is here, and with exams just a few weeks away, now is not a good time to get sick. There are a lot of things on campus, like keyboards and door handles, that a lot of people touch. While what you touch isn't enough to make you ill, it's important to think about where your fingers go after they leave the keyboard. Assistant biology professor Dave Gamond said the key is to keep your hands away from your face, your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, especially after you've been in a public place. Guilford and Davidson counties recently reported their 17th case of rabies. Alamance County reported several cases earlier this year. Here are some tips to help keep you safe from contracting rabies. If you have a pet, vaccinate it against rabies. Do not try to rescue pet or pick up a wild animal. If you were bitten or scratched by a wild animal, wash the wound with soap and water immediately. And if you see a stray animal that looks sick or acting strangely, call animal control. Flip-flops, boots, flats, and high heels, they're all shoes girls love to wear, but they're actually damaging your feet. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, between 2005 and 2009, women's visits to the doctor for foot complaints increased by 75%. Heels are especially bad for your feet and can cause a variety of issues such as ankle strains, bunions, and stress factors. There are plenty of friendly shoes for women to wear that offer comfort while still being fashionable. And freshmen, if you're worried about gaining that infamous freshman 15, you can stop worrying. According to a recent study, freshmen only gain an average of three pounds during their first year of college. The study was conducted by Ohio State University. Warning labels might be changing on cigarette packages, but not just yet because Monday, a U.S. District Judge ruled that the FDA's proposal, proposed graphic cigarette warning labels are unconstitutional. And as Joe Bruno reports, the reaction is mixed between smokers and non-smokers. Jimmy Smith has been smoking for five years, and warning labels have never stopped him before. I just don't really care. I'm like, I don't plan on smoking cigarettes for the rest of my life. But he has a different opinion about the FDA's proposed cigarette warning labels. I mean, if I saw these when I was younger, I might have, <laughs> I might have uh, not smoked. These images are graphic, and according to U.S. District Judge Richard Leon, they are unconstitutional. A local doctor disagrees. Uh, I, I fail to see the argument that it violates anybody's First Amendment rights. Do you think these were photoshopped? Or? No, these are real. Dr. Jeanette Archinal has first-hand experience with these labels. When the FDA needed a doctor to supervise one of the photo shoots, they came to her. Uh, it's easy to ignore letters. Pictures have more impact. I think these should be there. The current warning label's only an inch long and proposed label will be covering about half the box, making it a little difficult for smokers to ignore to just light up. But to one smoker, the unconstitutional warnings seem exaggerated. I mean, I just, the smart ads, I just think they're going a little bit over the top. Joe Bruno, Phoenix 14 News. The battle is far from over for these labels. The Justice Department has the opportunity to appeal the ruling in an attempt to get the labels put on the cigarette cartons. Coming up on Phoenix 14 News, he says he is shy, but only but one first year student is bringing attention to himself in a very loud way. People aren't always there to support them. One Elon student is making sure all the service men and women feel supported. We were boys, just boys, and then there was war. They were college days when they were called to serve, and now more than half a century later, these men are being honored like never before. Katie O'Brien traveled to D.C. this weekend in honor of Veterans Day. Katie joins us live in the studio to tell us why. Katie. 
Well, Friday was Veterans Day, and the last time the Flight of Honor will take off from the Triad. This national program, locally sponsored by Rotary 7690, has sent more than 1,000 veterans on a day trip to Washington, D.C. in the past two years. I took the trip with the, this local group as they finally went to visit the monuments that commemorate their very own actions. Depart Greensboro at 0900 hours. Arrive in Washington, D.C. and load the buses by 1100 hours. Despite the military precision, this day is unlike any other these veterans have ever experienced. Right, we're going to have a great day. These 94 veterans were stationed all around the world, but most have never been to Washington to see their monument, where 4,000 gold stars stand to represent the more than 400,000 who gave their lives. You, you don't think about getting killed. Uh, the crew right beside of me on the B-29, uh, every one of them, the plane went down and every one of them died. The veterans visited the National Navy Museum, the Iwo Jima Memorial, and the Air Force Memorial, which rests above Washington. Many of these men were part of the Air Force, both in the air and on the ground, including John Marvin. When I got about halfway through that basic training, I thought I had learned all I wanted to know about digging foxholes and crawling on my belly. That's when John Marvin joined the Air Force as an aviation engineer. At only 20 years old, he went to the Pacific, where he repaired bombing planes. I could tell when the war was starting to wind down because as the planes came back and circled to land, uh, I could see less and less damage. The planes that came back were the lucky ones. The veterans ended their day at Arlington Cemetery to honor those who didn't return. The more than 600 acres are the final resting place for those they trained next to, slept next to, and fought next to, their fellow service men and women. Throughout the day, there were some reflective moments. Some stayed by themselves at the memorials, while others shared stories with each other. But there wasn't a feeling of sadness. These veterans were just happy to rem be remembered. After one stop, there was a handmade card for every vet like this one that says, thanks for defending our proud country. While those vets traveled to D.C. for their Veterans Day, local vets had a celebration of their own. We come today and we're giving you thanks for these men and for the service. The Veterans of Foreign Wars post 7316 held its annual ceremony for local veterans with guest speaker Army Command Sergeant Major Charles Pulliam. The ceremony honored 250 local veterans who served in World War I and after, and those who attended were given the chance to stand up and introduce themselves. There are many ways to honor our military, and Brian Mazursky found one student who organized a way for students to support the troops. Students spent their Veterans Day packing, but not for a vacation. They got together to honor military men and women with Team Hero, an organization that raises funds for veteran and military support. Today was the packaging day, where we put one of each item in a bag, and we're going to ship those off to a an organization that sends care packages. More than 20 student and community volunteers helped Team Hero founder Clara Martin build care packages. People who don't get a care package maybe get one of ours. Students have donated items as small as granola bars or hand sanitizer to be used in care packages for veterans, but they know that their work with Team Hero has a much greater impact in veterans' lives. It makes me feel proud. Vietnam veteran David Burnett Jr. Join the volunteers because he remembers receiving support when he was overseas. It feels good to know that somebody back home was caring about us. As volunteers continue helping with projects sponsored by Team Hero, Martin wants them to see the bigger picture. We want to get students more involved with the military and remember that people are still fighting over there and people aren't always there to support them. Brian Mazursky, Phoenix 14 News. Students gave close to 450 donations for the Veterans Day drive, and the volunteers assembled more than 70 care packages to be sent to service members. To learn more about joining Elon's Team Hero, visit phoenix14news.wordpress.com. Today was a beautiful warm day, but the rest of the week might not be quite as nice. Here's your five-day forecast. You'll need your umbrella when you walk to your 8 a.m. tomorrow. It will be it will still be a warm day with a high near 74, but showers are expected in the morning. Wednesday will also be warm with a high with a chance of thunderstorms. The rest of the week looks to be sunny, but temperatures will drop off a bit. Highs for Thursday and Friday will be in the upper 50s, and Saturday will be 63. Gas prices are slowly decreasing, and if you're looking to fill up for less, we've got the lowest prices around town in this week's Pump Patrol. 
The Shell and Sitco on South Church Street have the cheapest gas, with regular at $3.31. The Marathon and Kangaroo on Haggard are slightly more expensive. The Marathon has gas at $3.35, and the Kangaroo is $3.36. After moving into the new colonnade, some students experienced an unpleasant surprise. Our Nicole Chadwick has the story. Lori Shackle chose to live in colonnades because it was brand new. She liked living there, but then... My shower exploded with sewage. Nearly two inches of sewage spewed out of Shackle's shower drain on October 1st, and physical plant didn't fix it until the next day. It was just really disgusting for a long time, and it shouldn't have been like that at all. More than a dozen new buildings are going up around campus. The station at Mill Point, Colonnades, and the Global Village will be completed by 2014. That means more than a thousand students will be moving in to brand new residence halls. Every building is inspected before students move in, but construction crews admit they're not going to catch everything. You're always going to find something. Might be a blemish on a wall, might be a loose handle on a sink, but bottom line is, no, you can never say never. There will always be something. We minimize it and then recover from it quickly. Shackle knows there will always be problems, but that doesn't make hers any better. It smelled horrible and the whole hall smelled bad. And I think that really sucks for someone to have to go through that. I know that they can't fix it, but maybe there's something they can do about it. Her shower is now clean and she hopes these problems won't appear in the new buildings. Nicole Chadwick, Phoenix 14 News. Head of construction Neil Bromelow says these problems can come from design flaws but they will do their best to try to avoid them in the future. Coming up on Phoenix 14 News, one, one first year student is jazzing up North Area with his saxophone. Mashups are popular on the radio, but a couple Elon DJs are bringing them to campus. 